das Zack und der Karlsruhe Gespräche. Lieber Herr Vorsitz, Vorstandsvorsitzender Hettich, sehr geehrter Herr Ladies Oberbürgermeister, and gentlemen, Herr Dr. dear friends of Herr ZAK Herr and the Karlsruhe Dialogue, dear Anthony Glees, welcome to Karlsruhe. Chairman Hettich, Unsere Lord Gäste Mayor Dr. Mentrup, heute Morgen Vice mitgekommen President Breuer, mitgehört, dass Sie schon and dear Anthony Glees, welcome to Karlsruhe. In unseren Wohnzimmern waren. Our guests may be noticed this morning that on German radio you already gave an interview and Mr. Hettich already mentioned that we made sure the EU drafts its agenda in a way that we couldn't be more excited now. It's glad, Professor, that we can still welcome you as an EU citizen. As a Scot, I hope that Scotland will make sure it stays this way. Thank you very much. Sie können sich vorstellen, die anerkennenden Worte, die ich schon gehört habe, das machen mich an meinen 20. Geburtstag ganz schön nervös. Und ich kann nur sagen, ein ganz, ganz you can imagine that Publikum, the Publikum, words we heard Herr before Herr really Herr made me very nervous now on my 20th anniversary. Zweitens, so first of all, thank you very Publikum much to my audience. Team. Without the audience, we wouldn't have a Mr. Hettich here who says, OK, we will really organize it. And without the audience and the great team, this wouldn't be possible. I'd like to thank my team very much as well. Without them, it wouldn't be possible to draft such a program which also lures so many excellent speakers to Karlsruhe. And I can tell you, we have a leaflet, please read the leaflet, and it will surprise you to see what a mixture of speakers we have there. So I'd like to start by thanking all sponsors, all promoters, especially Sparta Bank and the city of Karlsruhe. I'm also glad that Ms. Susanna Asche, as the head of the cultural office, is here. And I'd like to thank our long-standing cooperation partners, the Badische Staatstheater and Arte, ZKM, the Schauburg Cinema. And I'm glad that we will be guests of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry tomorrow, who have been supporting us for 10 years. Thank you very much for your confidence. Before I introduce you to the topic of this year's Karlsruhe Dialogues, which now is depressingly topical, I must say, let me first of all remind you of the goals of the Karlsruhe Dialogues and give you a brief look back regarding the topics we discussed in recent years. The cultural dialogues are taking place for the 20th time. I think I mentioned it already, and I think we all know that it cannot be taken for granted because the concept is different from other conferences. For the speakers, these meetings give the opportunity to understand a lot of things outside of their expertise because we include the arts, theater, and the film, and we reach a very versatile audience on the spot and in the virtual network. We have we have an extensive archive, you can find us on YouTube, we are represented on Facebook and we Twitter. So we want to convince as many citizens as possible to take part. 20 years ago, in the castle, today we are in a kind of castle again, I presented the concept of a public science for the first time and I think it is an institutional duty of university to take part in a discourse which is relevant for society. I mention this with gratitude, the fact that my university allowed me to take action and that they support ZAK today. Thank you very much, Dr. Breuer. With the cultural dialogues, we want to discuss relevant topics for society from the point of view of scientific disciplines, theory and practice, but also from the perspective of civil society. I think it is indispensable as well that the cultural dialogues are oriented internationally. This way, intercultural differences 
different understandings, but also concrete interest-based geopolitical and cultural points of view are shown. Part of our accelerated life in a globalized world are more competition and institutional strategic orientation of our principles of action, which then pre-shape our selective perception and our decisions. And with this, we also have the risk of a selective point of view and the possibility of losing the comparison where you question yourself. The cultural dialogues are not aimed at sitting back and idle in a wellness attitude. In 2007 and 2008 already, supported by the German UNESCO Commission, we dealt with the topic of my Europe, your Europe. At the time, exterior and interior views of non-Europeans were in the focus. We were able to listen to how people see estimate and criticize Europe. I only want to focus on one central aspect that stayed in my mind and which is extremely relevant for the internal and external credibility of Europe. Salim Mahmoud Osman, lawyer and human rights activist from Darfur in the Sudan and parliamentarian in the Khartoum, described the genocides which started in 2003 and asked why Europe does not take care of them. What can happen in situations like these had turned out in 1995 in Srebrenica in a very cruel way. Syria shows clear parallels and shows our powerlessness. Cynically, we could state Europe as a lightweight in foreign policy very rarely speaks with one voice. The idea that Europe will be split up into individual parts or into two political camps as in the post-war period has to startle us. So we wonder what keeps Europe together. What challenges do we see because of Poland? What about Hungary's idea about democracy? And we also deal, deal with the Pegida phenomenon, which was started in Dresden. And I would like to say something that is not written down here and is not for the press. I just returned from Zagreb. I was invited to visit a conference there on Monday. And this situation is discussed there very, in a very lively way. And they discuss nationalist values and so on, and people say, well, maybe we should also influence the arts in general. I only want to mention this internally to you and not for the record. And I was there to represent our university and other representatives of other institutions were there as well. So we ask uh, what keeps Europe together and how will Europe rearrange itself geopolitically and regionally. We see examples in Portugal and we asked for ways and wrong decisions to take us out of the crisis. We see that Catalonia will have a new creative power of separatist movements and a Brexit would amputate the EU and probably call upon the Scottish separatists right away. This year it is about co-shaping the order in Europe. And, well, the Greek Amanda Michalopoulou recently said in an essay the following, I quote, it looks as if we found ourselves in the brain of Victor Hugo, who believed in the potential coexistence of nationalism, 
and Europeanism. And she asks, is this possible at all? Or do you make a choice in one way or the other? End of quote. Patriotism and national pride do not mean that we reject the other party or the other person. But still, we have to wonder how the growing nationalist and right-wing and leftist trends in Europe have to be valued. Which understanding of the highly esteemed unity in diversity has stayed virulent? What are the values that are passed on as European values? We wonder in how far the responsibility and duty of national states go that need to be defended. And what kind of leeway is left by the structural and legal framework of the community for single-handed efforts? This is being discussed at the moment. Finally, we wonder what can we understand by a European community of solidarity? We ask, is it possible to correct the sometimes as a chaos seen situation in Europe? Can it be a, an opportunity to find a way to come up with a new architecture of the European house? Can the situation mean that a Europe of two or even more speeds will be used as a political force. Not only chaos theoreticians confirmed that chaos can also be an opportunity for creative solutions that have not been taken into consideration before. Referring to Europe, this means that we can learn lessons from past crises and at least in the medium term, we can think about a completely European responsibility in international politics. Many people criticize that media, politicians and civil society do not focus on the opportunities that are part and parcel of a crisis. And rational reflection is becoming more and more difficult. It could be helpful to remember that identity is a socio-cultural construction. In other words, identities are not static, they keep changing and they can be influenced from the outside and we have to be careful here. You can acquire them and this has been confirmed empirically as well. We always have several identities in parallel which, depending on the context, are important. The process of putting identity into perspective is a very complex process. To make it clear by using just one example, be it migrant or refugee, hardly anybody will just leave his culture by the wayside and people are not supposed to do so. Culture, socialization and tradition are what is left to this people because of the uprooting and the cultural shock because of the more or less friendly life situation to uh, have an identity of its own. Changes and accepting a new situation depend on the situation of meeting others and also from your personal environment and specific dispositions. When it comes to integrative processes, apart from emotional aspects of identity, the factual perception is important, such as access to education and the labor market. This applies to individual ideas and also at a collective level of the nation state. But if we go further, we can ask ourselves whether there is a real consensus or whether there can be a real consensus about this or whether there should be a real consensus about what Europe is, what the values are it represents and how much consensus we need regarding this question in order to guarantee the cohesion of the community. We would like to ask two central questions in this context. First of all, how much crisis can Europe bear without jeopardizing the intra-European cohesion which has become more and more difficult? 
do we have a situation, as President Juncker already warns us against, a view of a point of no return? But one thing is for sure, the European integrative process will not work on the basis of lessons learned and let's carry on. Via interests, principles, targets, strategies, compromise and ideas to implement, we would like to get hold of a solution and we would like to discuss it intensely. Secondly, we have to wonder whether the idea of a European Union, as the founding generation worded it and laid, as it was laid down in many treaties, is still shared by all 28 member states and developed further. What does a community of solidarity mean in this context? What, which were the interests and expectations when other countries joined the European Union? And how different are the real political problems and the solution priorities? And we wonder whether the growing polarization at the level of the nation state can be turned back into a sober debate of democratic competition, the value of which will continue for longer than just until the next election. Where do legitimate objections stop and where do they turn into undemocratic positions or political blackmail? Which priority does the EU have when it comes to national interests? We will hear something about this. And how can the subsidiarity principle be realized in today's globalized and localized world without questioning the basic pillars of a European community of solidarity? So which reforms does the EU need and which of them can be achieved in what way? As always, we will record all the presentations and spread them via YouTube. You are very welcome to comment everything via Facebook and Twitter. And we will evaluate the cultural dialogues. I think we should do so on the occasion of our 20th anniversary. And we'd very much appreciate if you took part in this evaluation. And I would also like to remind you that we also publish our scientific results. And now, just in time, this month, the 10th volume of our paper's Interdisciplinary Cultural Science was published by Nomos in Baden-Baden, and the title is The Intermediate Society Awakenings Between Tradition and Modernism. And I'm glad that Mr. Deiber of the publishing house is here today. Before I come to the end of my speech, I would like to very briefly present or introduce other guests that we have here today. Of course, here at the Academy of Music, we will hear some performances. We look forward to hear Cornelius Lillenberg, baritone, and Melanie Kluge playing the piano. Prior to the keynote by Anthony Cleese, they will perform three songs by Franz Schubert. And after the keynote, with the title Challenge Europe, Germany's EU Ambitions, we will hear three songs by Robert Schumann. Today, we will stay within Europe. This is not always the case. Ladies and gentlemen, in a political community, all members have to have a clear idea about the question whether their own interests or the community are more important and better for the future. If we do so, maybe there is a realistic opportunity, because we want to be optimistic, as the Lord Mayor said, that we in Europe will come up with an interest towards the community of solidarity. But we have to listen to Donald Tusk, who said recently, handle with care, because the broken cannot be mended. Thank you very much. Oh! 
Oh, 